Um, thank you very much for all the presentations because I can shorten the first, uh, first part a little bit. Because, and also I shortened a little bit the title, it was too long. So I will talk a little bit about BIM and blockchain and smart contracts. And maybe at the end, because we discussed it also yesterday and also during the day, I will show you a little bit also some ideas or what we are doing uh, at the moment in Europe regarding data spaces, data sharing and something like this. It's always somehow also related to blockchain. Uh, because this is very important, Wh where is the data, who can access the data. So first of all, I will show you one really uh, specific example. So we started, uh, I think, uh, 2019 with a project about payment, about smart uh, contracts. And of course, um, so we had, of course, some pain points also in, in Germany about the contract management. It's really complicated if you have a lot of supplier, a lot of, a lot of companies, and of course, then you have to uh, 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 yeah, have some kind of transparency in the contracts. So this is one reason. Then we thought the same thing. So uh, sometimes in, in Germany, at least, you uh, use some kind of facts for submitting invoices. So that means uh, maybe it takes two or three weeks, then the invoice is somewhere, maybe you can use email, it's not really faster, and then maybe you get the payment after two months, three months, or something like this. So, and of course, then it's always the discussion about uh, do I pay everything, but maybe we have some defects and maybe, then the negotiation goes goes on, and then we have a lot of uh, delays, and sometimes we have some some companies yeah, just gone, and we have a lot of insolvency rates in the construction uh, industry. And of course, um, of course, it, we have also delays on the process, and then of course we have also again late payment. So late payment is a big issue uh, in, in in Germany. So maybe we can do something here. Fortunately, we have some kind of digitalization. So, um, so nowadays, if you are starting a new project, mainly you have some kind of a BIM model or BIM-based planning. So that means you are hand over a BIM model as the contract target. So here is the model, you have to build this model uh, as a, in a physical course. So then we have, of course, everything around, some use cases. You can uh, link quantities, you can maybe define deliverables, you define deadlines, everything is there. And of course, nowadays uh, on the construction side, you use your phone for documentation, and we had also some kind of fancy platforms for issue management and something like this. So I think this is quite working. And, and we have this open format. So everything is good. So maybe how, uh, now the idea is just to connect this. So we came up with a so-called ecosystem, say, okay, we have the client, we have the contractor, and first of all, we have to make a contract. Um, so we have to think about how, which parts of the contract we can do in a digitalized way, so in a, to a smart contract, which parts still stay in the paper-based contract and how we can combine them a little bit. And then, of course, we're thinking about how we can um, support all the interactions between storing some data information images about issues so we use normally the common data environments um, and therefore we think okay we are just using this maybe this is also some kind of problem so for us uh, the main topic was smart contracts and of course the best implementation maybe is to use a blockchain based smart contract you can also do this in another way because smart contracts are quite old they are now old, 30 40 years old the first uh, um, um, papers about smart co contracts are more like a, you're using a database and just document what you are doing. Maybe now it's a little bit more secure, maybe more flexible, and you have some kind of programming language for that. And then we also talked a lot of a lot with banks, how we can process the payment. There's one option, uh, there's an API um, to the bank system. And if you agree at the beginning in the contract that there's an automatic payment, you can install something like this. However, the problem is you can only transfer 200,000 euros at one time. So and for big projects, maybe it's not possible to do this, but for smaller ones, it, it was. So it's also um, solvable. So first of all, um, we are thinking about what we can use. So we have this BIM model. So uh, 
the design or what we want to build, then we normally link this with uh, um, some quantities. We have the bill of quantities. Uh, so we have a, a format for that in Germany for a long time. So everything is standardized. Um, all the deliverables are described in a standardized way. It's, it's quite, uh, quite nice. However, you have to bring them together. So would you, you link maybe the ID of, uh, of the uh, element component in the BIM model with the uh, quantities and the bill of quantities, and then you form some kind of payment or billing units. So if this is done, I, you get the payment. Um, and of course, you have to set up some logic that you say, okay, we first set up the, uh, this billing units, we call this billing unit or payment units. You, then you, you start the construction work, you document it, everything on the blockchain then you report it's complete and then you do a checking acceptance and maybe then you execute the payment and confirm the payment so uh, i think it's a process and you can say okay this process i want to bring into a smart contract so paper pays contract because in our project we have we had also lawyers so what is the integration? So we had the paper-based contract. We have also some kind of template in Germany. So, and then we found out there are two or three parts where you say, okay, now this part we want to replace everything about the building, about the bill of quantities, the payment plan, and maybe you have to integrate in your paper-based contract, the smart contract code uh, somehow. So how we did this, so there was some kind of a linkage to create first, uh, uh, the paper-based contract, you uh, say, okay, now here you, you have the digital contract. I show you later a little bit how we're doing this. Then we also calculate some hash code for this contract part, write it into the paper-based, then we sign it, then we upload both things and deploy it on the blockchain. It's uh, straightforward, but it's working. So the lawyer said, okay, this, this is okay. You can go uh, to court and it's, it's valid. Um, so, the main thing is how to generate the smart contract. It's programming. So we came up with the idea that we model the process and behind every component you can model, there is some kind of um, component which is linked to a smart contract code. So that means, so the the client or the con uh, contractor maybe can set up something like this, a BPMN diagram, then we just parse it, then we have some components we put in, say, okay, this is connected somehow, and then we ge generate based on that, and then we deploy it. We, are, we started using Ethereum um, for that. We are also thinking about a public, private, or consortium uh, blockchain. So we came up with the idea consortium blockchain would be the best because um, it's, it's not in general open, but it's not in general private, it's something in the middle. Um, so now I want to show you only some of the, the images. So this is the whole concept. So we developed also some kind of software because it's important that you have a nice interface. So in general, well, in general, nobody cares about the blockchain, about the smart contract, so it's about the user interface. So, so we de developed together with a software company some kind of user uh, interface. However, most of them, so it's in German, but I try to put some, some English word there. So you can log in. Of course, you need, this is the only thing you really need, you need a blockchain ID. Otherwise, it's not uh, not. Uh, possible, then you can just upload all the models, you can define your billing pay payment plan online by just drag and drop, you can uh, modify and put together some kind of payment units, and then later on you can also uh, define something like, okay, do I need some partial payment, so it's not complete, maybe I get a some money for that, or we have some withholding, or we have what we are, how we are dealing with defects. And, and all these things, so we discussed with the lawyer, what is normal in a court contract, what you are normally do, and we try to bring it also in this platform that you just configure what you want to do. And it's quite, li uh, quite nice, and you can also say this is possible for all for the whole contract but you can also say for this special part in the building you have a special configuration and we set up uh, set up a contract for every contractor for every subcontractor and we are also linking the contracts a little bit 
However, this is also very difficult. Um, so this is uh, so. Then, of course, um, in in the end, you also upload something, and we say, okay, there is always a common data environment. You upload all the files on the common data environment. You get back the hash code, and this hash code is in the in the blockchain, and we extract also some information. Five minutes left. I have to um, speed up a little bit, um, and, and then, of course, uh, you can deploy it. And we have also some nice uh, um, mobile devices where you can maybe say, okay, here is the completed work, just go on the site, say it checked, it's done. Uh, and then later on you can check it and say it's complete. Then you generate an invoice directly. We have a format for the digital invoice in Germany. You can send it directly by email. And of course you do the payment also directly. And of course, uh, you can report some de defects uh, and and so on. So in general, the platform is quite nice. It's really working. We set up this for for one pilot project. However, um, we are not. Can, uh, it's really hard for us to convince the construction industry to use it. And we are looking still for some money that we say, okay, this prototype is running, but uh, we need further development. I skipped a little bit this part about claim management because you have also to think about claims. So these are additional smart contracts you have to put, bring in into the system. Also, we solve this not in, uh, in a, with a nice user interface that we solved afterwards. We had also some small application. It's more really, really prototyping um, to find out where are the claims, uh, which parts of the bill of quantity you have to delete because you also have to delete it, not delete, but you mark it as delete on the blockchain and something like this. This is, this is also working. Now, data management was uh, the biggest issue because we say we are not really storing so much data in the blockchain. We want to store it somewhere else. Of course, you can do this in the project with uh, a CDE. However, after the project, maybe everything, everything is gone. And so I, I want, only want to share some ideas. So this issue is not a problem of the construction industry. It's an issue of, of many industries. So therefore, uh, five years ago, uh, the European Union decided to create a decentralized data ecosystem, or as many ecosystems. It's called Gaia. It's a, it's a god from the Greek, uh, yeah, um, and it's the mother of Earth, something like this. So a lot of uh, 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 countries joined everything. So what is the, the idea? So you have services, data, and AI, IoT, everything. You have infrastructure, you have storages, but you need something in the middle for trust, for identity, for data exchange, for compliance, for listing data in a catalog. So in the last five years, they spent 500 million euros to develop only a reference architecture. It's not a product you can buy, it's an architecture with some open source code. You can download and you can use it in project. We have some projects like this, really large projects. The first one is the automotive industry network in whole Europe. So that means you, you tr set up an ecosystem based on these rules and then you can exchange data or for uh, agriculture or for manufacturing or for electronic supply or for mobility so you just can go there there are normally also some english uh, web pages so they are using this with companies together uh, set up so what what it does it look like so we have you have different e ecosystem you see there's also a blockchain so you can use blockchain you can use normal databases you can use everything so it's more about the upper layer it's not about how you store it it's, it's about the trust layer is a little bit different than the trust layer in the blockchain. So we say there, there must be a association uh, gives you some, some credentials and something like this. And the good thing here is, maybe I have one or two more minutes. Um, they're thinking about data exchange in a way that they say, I, I have data, I want to maybe sell it. Then I say, I have to describe my data. 
There is a format for that called a self-description. Then you go there, publish this in a, in a catalog. You say what, what you want as money and what are the maybe boundaries and something like this. And there's another one who you say, okay, I wanted to have this data. I go into the catalog, check the self-description, is everything valid and something like this. Then you uh, start signing a data contract based on smart contract is qu quite nice. And then you have a data exchange logging service. So the data, so you have a contract and then you directly exchange the data and you log everything. The system looks a little bit like this. So you see there's, an, there's a really uh, smart contract behind it. So this is really, really quite, uh, quite nice really to define um, uh, the, the fundamental uh, uh, the, the fundamentals for the data exchange, the rules and everything. And of course, you, you need something like a portal, a catalog. Uh, you, you need single sign on because you don't want to sign on always on the blockchain. So there's something like single sign on and you have some uh, kind of trust servers. And if you uh, need more information about that, so we have uh, there's a big web website um, about this huge project in Europe. Also, US is uh, joined. Uh, also, I, I saw also UK is now a part of it. Japan, um, um, and I, I think now it's really working. So I'm a head of the domain design, build, and operate in Germany. So if you have further questions, I, I'm glad to answer this. And I skip also this uh, summary slide because I'm running out of time. I think. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>